you're listening to the Digitally Irresistible Podcast, where we cover the optimization of digital technologies and irresistible people. Brought to you by i Each episode features someone who sheds a little more light on the ins and outs of delivering a great employee and customer experience that has a measurable impact on the business. And now, here's today's guest. Welcome to another episode of the Digitally Irresistible Podcast. I'm your host, Bernie Borges. Today's guest is Gary Prasnick. Gary, welcome. Thank you, Bernie. Uh, I appreciate the opportunity. You know, one of the things that I've been struggling with is to try to get this gig. It seems like a difficult thing. I I called my agent last night and I said, where am I in the pecking order? Step up the fees. And uh, miraculously, here we are. So I appreciate I, it. I, I heard from your agent. So yes, yeah, here we are. <laughs> well, it, it is a thrill to have you on the podcast, Gary. I mean, look, you are the president and CEO at i And uh, the reason that I wanted to have you on specifically is to talk about something that you talk a lot about. And that is, you've said, Gary, that your listening skills have been very influential in your career. In fact, you call it the power of listening. So what I want to discuss with you is what, what is the importance of listening in someone's career? So let's get into that. But first, Gary, why don't we begin with an introduction? Tell us a little bit of your backstory and how you got to be the CEO at i -Corps. Yeah, sure. Um, it's, it's a very interesting story, and I love sharing it with people. Um, I, uh, at a very young age, uh, after graduating from college, um, I like to talk about the fact that I used to spent a lot of time on my couch at home. And, and my father came home one day and said, you can't lay on the couch any longer. And I said, OK, well, I'll just sit in the chair. And he said, no, I, you can't sit in the chair. And I finally figured out that I wasn't listening very well. And he was signaling to me that it was time to move on. Uh, and so I packed up uh, and moved to Houston, Texas with some college roommates uh, with a suitcase. Uh, and that was about it. And uh, that was back in 1983, and uh, I moved back to uh, Columbus, Ohio uh, with a wife, um, a trailer full of furniture and a dog, uh, but no jobs uh, after doing odds and sods in, in Houston, Texas. And uh, I convinced somebody uh, to rent us a, a condo uh, in Columbus, Ohio. And uh, without a job, and I figured, you know, that's probably a, a fairly decent sign that I'm, I might have a career uh, in sales. And so I, I answered an ad, and uh, and I started out in the call center business as a salesperson for okay. uh, in the collection business, and that was that was 37, 38 years ago. Um, but you know, I think uh, I grew up in a uh, blue collar town in Youngstown, Ohio. My grandfather's worked in the steel mills, and so uh, it was instilled in me at a very young age. Um, that hard work and perseverance will pay off. Uh, I just had to be reminded of that by my father and he did it in his own uh, very distinct way. So um, I think it should give, but you know, those, uh, th those lessons and, and those uh, environmental, you know, places that, that, uh, that you come from still, you know, uh, I embrace today, still yeah. are part of who I am today. Uh, and I'm still that guy from Youngstown, Ohio. Well, like you said, it's in your DNA, and uh, you know you've been with iCore for more than twenty-one years. So, chances are your listening skills have had a pretty good contribution to get you to the CEO role. So, Gary, let's talk about first: what is listening as a skill? As a skill, and why is it so important in life? Well, as a skill, um, it's a it's a really fantastic way to to learn and to understand. Um, how you can be instrumental in, in helping really in any situation. Um, you know, people learn information in a number of different mediums. And, and I do that through simply through listening in, in no matter what I do. Uh, and when I listen, I listen for things, you know, I, I watch a lot of news as an example and when I'm watching the news, I'm not just listening to the content specifically, but I'm actually watching the person who's, providing me the information. I'm uh, listening to their vocabulary. I'm listening to how articulate they are. I'm trying to learn new words. Um, so 
it's a it's a process for me and all and always has been. And then I take what I think fits into my own personality and then use that uh, in in everyday life. And and news is just one one simple example. Um, but if you think about you know listening skills in general, it's the it's the fundamental foundation of how we build relationships in everything that we do on a personal sure. level, on a business level, uh, and everything that we do. And so those skills are, you know, and, and it's an art. I mean, it's not something that you can just um, take a very lax, you know, kind of approach to. I mean, you need to pay attention. Uh, and the person that you're listening to needs to know that you're engaged in them. You know, from a physical standpoint, you have to be making eye contact. You have to portray good body language. Um, you have to ask good questions um, when you're a great listener because people have a tremendous fear of silence. And um, you can ask a simple question that you'll get a yes or a no to, or you can ask a question that somebody has to answer with an actual uh, response that's more than more than just yes and no. So um, learning how to do it well, learning how to do it in a very professional way um, is something that I just, uh, it, it has always been instilled at, uh, st- yeah. instilled in me for, for a long time. I'm glad you mentioned the, the body language aspect of it as well, which is great when you are talking to someone in person or maybe on video, but oftentimes we're not, especially in this remote world that we're working in. So how do listening skills come into play in terms of our day-to-day life and business, specifically as it relates to managing projects and solving problems and that sort of thing? Yeah, I think what, um, again, something that's very important um, is providing people a forum to make sure that their voices are heard Um, and understanding and listening to what they have to say uh, and providing feedback, which is also an important part, you know, Feedback may not be a part of listening, but it's a, you know, or it's not just innate that it's a part of listening, but it is. And you have to provide that positive feedback. And I think one thing that's always been important for me is when I, whatever forum I'm provided to do that, I want to be able to come to those forums, not just with a problem or the goal of having my voice heard, but I want to be able to provide solutions. Uh, I may have a problem, but I want to come with a solution. And I can do that and ask for feedback about not only my problem, but also the solution. Too many people come to those environments just to vent their problem. Uh, and that just doesn't really end up in a healthy style of communication. And, it, and it's very challenging. And somebody told me that what will happen over time is you end up with all those problems in your office and you'll look up one day and, you know, you won't have enough uh, energy to be able to solve all those problems if you're not asking people to actually come with solutions as well. Uh, So I think it's a fantastic way. But every element of what we do um, in business is around problem solving. And the only way to be able to do that is to understand and listen to what those challenges are uh, in a very effective way. And then really make sure that you have clarity. There's a lot of uh, misunderstanding through conversations where people think they understand what somebody just said. But clarifying what they said and and repeating back to them what they said to do that clarification is absolutely critical. Yeah. Does it matter what role you're in 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 business? You know, if you're an engineer, finance, sales, operations, does it matter? I don't think it does. Um, I mean, I I spent a lot of a, a lot of time in my career in sales, and so a lot of my stories are related to sales. But I don't really think that it applies more to any one industry than, than another, unless you're a psychiatrist, it probably would be good to have very, very focused listening skills. Yeah. (laughs) Gary, as you know, on the digitally irresistible podcast, we are featuring Icorians really across the entire organization. And you may recall back in episode five, we featured Strawberry Castro, who started with us as a call center agent. And then over the, the span of the her first five years in her career at i she got to be a training manager. But along the way, you know, she had one little setback. And I think you, you watched that, that episode. How do you think her listening skills contributed to her getting to what she calls her dream job at i Yeah, well, 
First of all, I mean, I, I just love the story of, of Strawberry. I mean, it's if, if you're not inspired by uh, listening to that, then um, I, I don't know what can inspire you. Um, the Filipino culture and people uh, inspire me anytime that I go there and anytime that I engage with them. And, and she's just so representative, representative of that. Um, but as it applies to listening, I mean, she... Uh, you know, had a little bit of a, a bump in the road uh, in her journey and quest to get to that ultimate uh, job that she wanted, where she didn't manage her time properly. Uh, and she wasn't able to complete the courses in time uh, in order to do that. But, you know, she listened to the advice and the coaching, uh, not just from her direct supervisors, but, you know, friends and peers and, and people maybe even at higher levels. Uh, and she said, you know, I'm going to I'm going to go back and do this. And uh, and when you show that kind of passion and you show the ability to listen and say, I want to correct this. And then when you do it, do it, in a, you know, she talked about just I knocked it out of the park when I really set my mind to it. You know, that's that's the cool thing about listening and then going back and doing something with with the kind of bigger that she did. Uh, and, you know. Perseverance and, and tenacity are, are two, I think, huge characteristics that yep. go along because you can listen, but if you don't do anything with it, then um, you haven't really accomplished much. So you have to add some, you know, some ingredients into the sauce. And, and she did yep. that. I agree. Really cool I agree. So as a business, how do we use the power of listening to run our business at ICOR? Well, there's a lot of forums and, and you will hear Robert Constantine, our uh, SVP of, of communications and marketing constantly remind me of a statement that I made to him many years ago. And that is, how do we communicate to 35,000 people? And at the time it was even, it was even more. Um, and he and I had a call earlier today and that that's what he was, he was saying, look, it's, it's time to, to communicate. Right. Uh, so there are many forums that, and we continue to try to, you know, uh, add forums to that, uh, at a consistency and level of cadence that uh, is amplified. But, you know, there are town halls uh, that we do on a regular basis that I think is a great forum. Um, you know, we have a moodometer that we're using uh, every day that we get feedback from that allows people to uh, voice how they feel about things. Um, we do an NPS survey, which uh, is, I think, is a fantastic way. As long as we're reacting to some of the things and we're actually fixing some of the challenges that people have. Um, and then, you know, coaching uh, in our business is, is so critical at, at every level. Uh, and specifically at the agent level, there's a constant requirement by our customers and, and by ourselves for that coaching experience to constantly happen. And there's so much to be learned uh, in that coaching. And, you know, some of the attributes of, uh, of coaching are to, you know, provide the right feedback, like I said, and, you know, defer judgment, um, respond in a very, you know, positive and constructive way. And so it's not just the agent listening, but it's making sure that the coaches know how to listen to the agent. So they walk away with that very, very positive feedback and uh, are able to take it. You know, it, advice is free. Um, and you have to be able to sort through and sift through the amount of advice that you get on a daily basis and say, what parts of this am I actually going to use in my everyday life? And I've used the principle of, I want to have somebody who actually has demonstrated success at the advice that they're providing me before I incorporate it into my arsenal. Uh, and I think that's a good way to, uh, to think about it. Yeah. Gary, do you have a, a memorable story that you might want to share and where listening has really paid off for you in your career? You know, a, it's probably, I mean, everything is listening to me, but I mean, a couple of things that, that jump out is somebody, uh, a superior of mine uh, almost 20 years ago told me that we all have a certain amount of calories that we can expend uh, throughout the course of the day. And you can make a decision on whether you want to spend those calories on things you can control and things you can't control. Uh, and I still live by that creed today. Um, because so many people I've seen focus so much energy on things that they can't control. And it's, it's very exhausting uh, because you don't, the, the outcome doesn't change uh, when you don't have control. Um, and then, you know, like I said, I already talked about this, but I, I, I want to reemphasize the fact that, you know, 
come to a situation, come to that forum uh, with a solution in addition to a problem. And there is never a bad solution. Um, so people should not have a, a fear of, of doing that. Um, and if you have the right people in a management position, they're going to listen to it. And hopefully they're just going to provide things that make the solution even better. Yeah. Um, and, and that's kind of the way that I think about uh, problem solving. So, Fantastic. Great advice. Thank you for sharing that. So Gary, I have one final question for you, and it's not about listening. And that is when you are not busy working as CEO at i what do you like to do for fun? Well, I, uh, you know, it's funny how your priorities change uh, over life as you get older, but I have four uh, grandchildren now and I love to spend time with them. Um, you know, talk about listening skills that are required to manage three-year-olds that uh, don't ever stop. Uh, it's very important. Uh, but I love to spend time on the water. Uh, I'm fortunate enough to to be close to it, and, and I love everything about about water. Um, I uh, I also am an avid golfer. Um, have been. I grew up on a public golf course uh, as a kid, so sports are very uh, near and dear to me, and uh, always will be. And I think there's such a correlation between uh, sports and business and life. Yeah. That, uh, but but so is can't do all the things I used to do, obviously, but uh, as many sporting things yeah. that. I, that and engage and I do. Sounds like a wonderful trifecta for things to do for fun, Gary. So thanks for sharing those. Gary, I just want to thank you for taking time out of your very hectic schedule. I know you're in high demand to join me here on this episode of the Digitally Irresistible Podcast and share your thoughts, your insights, your wisdom on the power of listening. Thank you so much, Gary. Thank you, Bernie. And thanks for finally having me on. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Digitally Irresistible Podcast, where we cover the optimization of digital technologies and irresistible people, delivering a great employee and customer experience that has a measurable impact on the business. Brought to you by i -Corps. Be sure to subscribe on your favorite podcast player so you don't miss future episodes.